All right, we're going to continue on with our reading and resist. We've left Samira racing to try and save her mother. As I read today, I want you to continue to think about Samira and the obstacles that she overcomes in these chapters. Um, I want you to think about if she is right or wrong to keep going. Think about what you might do if you were in her situation. This next chapter is called An Empty Nest. The city of Beirut was still asleep or in hiding as Samira ran through the streets. Ever since the Nazi occupation began, it was always safer inside your home than out. But something was wrong. Something was more unusual. Even then during the occupation, what should have been a bustling living city was quietly hibernating. It was eerie. The lights were off in the bakeries. Cafe chairs were stacked on their tables. The drug druggists were closed. While lilies filled the buckets in the florist's shop window, but no one was there to sell them. Blinds on windows were drawn and shutters were closed. When the Beirut Cathedral bells chimed seven o'clock in the morning, Samira started, started at the sound. Up and down the narrow cobblestone street, not a soul was out and about. That's when Samira realized what else was missing, the Nazis. For four years, they had been an ever-present menace everywhere you went. Nazi soldiers on street corners, in village pubs, in shops, in restaurants, on bridges, and trains. You could not turn around without running into a German soldier. But here in Beirut, they were all gone. She had not seen a single Nazi soldier since a parade of them had driven by a half an hour ago. Were they hiding too? No, the parade she had seen was Beirut's Germans. She did not see any soldiers here in the city because they had all just driven past her. The Nazis had abandoned Beirut. Whether they were going to attack Allied soldiers somewhere else or defend some other larger city, she did not know, but it didn't matter. All that mattered was that her mother and the other prisoners might not be dead. But where were they? Serrano, we have to find our families, Samira told the little, her little companion. Serrano was trotting from sidewalk to sidewalk, sniffing at things and lifting his leg here and there to mark where he had been. She wished she understood her urgency. Just because the Nazis had retreated, that didn't mean her mother and the others were safe. The Nazis were like wasps. Even if you thought they were ignoring you, one of them could still sting you when you were least expecting it. If anyone would know where her mother and the prisoners were being held, it would be one of the people of the city. But where were they? There was only one way to find out. Samira ran up to the first door that looked like someone's home and knocked. Next chapter is called They'll Always Come Back. Hello? Samira called. Is anyone there? She saw a curtain rustle in the window, but no one answered the door. I'm looking for my mother. She is with the other prisoners. She was brought to the city overnight, Samira called through the door. There was still no answer. She went into the next door and tried again. Nothing. There were people behind these doors. She was sure of it, but they were too scared to answer. Look, the Nazis are gone, Samira called. I saw them. They're headed south and east. It's the invasion. It's beginning. Go away, someone called from an upstairs window. Samira spun, but she could not see who or where they were. They can still come back. They always come back. No, you don't understand, Samira called back. I just need to find out where my mother was taken. Serrano barked, joining in the conversation. But as the sound of his bark echoed away, the city became silent again. Everyone was scared. No one knew what was coming next. And not knowing was the worst part. Would they be freed by the Allies? Or would the invasion fail and the Nazis come back stronger, meaner, and angrier than before? Samira understood their fear. She was frustrated, too. She was so tired, very, very tired. She had worked so hard to help the resistance, 
to help the Allied soldiers, to hike back and forth across Normandy on foot to get here just after dawn. And now the Nazis were gone, and her mother might be somewhere close by, but no one would help. Please, Samira begged. She couldn't keep the tears out of her voice. Serrano came up alongside her and whimpered, sharing her sadness. Samira slumped. Girl, come here, someone whispered. It was an elderly white woman with a faded red kerchief tied around her head. She had opened the door just a crack a few houses down and was peeking outside. Samira dried her eyes and ran towards the house. Serrano was faster, and when he tried to run inside, the women closed the door even more, making the space too small for him to fit. Samira's heart skipped a beat. She didn't want the old woman to close her door again just because of Serrano. Samira snatched up the little dog and waited hopefully. The old woman opened the door again and took a quick look up and down the street. The old hotel across from the cathedral, the woman whispered, that's where they're taking the prisoners. They're bringing them in from the countryside. If your mother is still alive, that's where she will be. A hotel across from the cathedral. Samira did not know the city, but the cathedral was easy enough to see. Its twin spires stood, stood, stood tall over the rooftops in the distance. Thank you. Thank you, Samira cried as she ran. Maybe her mother was still alive. Maybe there was still time. Good luck, girl, the woman called after her. Maybe they've left. Maybe they're really gone for good. And our last chapter today is called Left Behind. Samira turned the last corner to Town Square where the cathedral stood. It was a huge brown and gray building, ancient and imposing. It had gargoyles for rain spouts and arches to hold up its walls. And the whole front of it was covered with beautiful, intricate, stained glass windows that had somehow survived the Allied bombing of Normandy, just like the rest of the city. Somebody up there must like Beirut, Samaria thought. Somebody up in those bombers. Another day, Samaria would have stopped and started, but not today. Today, she only had eyes for the humbling buildings across the street from the cathedral. An old hotel the Nazis had turned into the headquarters. As she ran down the street, the front door of the hotel opened, and out walked the first person Smira had seen on the street that whole morning. A Nazi soldier with his rifle over his shoulder. Samira slid to a stop, turned, and ran for the, for the protection of a doorway. She slammed backwards into the door, Serrano still in her arms, and peeked out around the doorframe. The Nazi soldiers looked up and down the street, and Samira ducked back behind the wall before he could see her. She waited a long, breathless moment and then peeked out again. The Nazi soldiers signaled, some, signaled to someone inside, and a woman staggered out into the street as though she had been pushed. She was followed by a young boy around Samira's age, and another woman carrying a baby and an older man. Samira did not recognize any of them, but her heart sank into her stomach at the thought that these might be the prisoners the Nazis had collected from the village last night. And then, halfway back in the line of prisoners, Samira saw her mother, Kenza Zadane. She still wore a tan raincoat over her blue dress, and she held her back straight and her head up high, but Samira knew her mother. She knew that she was tired and afraid. Samira's heart stopped. The last of the prisoners came out of the hotel, followed by a second Nazi soldier with a machine gun. He barked something at the prisoners, and together, Samira's mother and the rest of them marched down the street and away from Samira. Arms and legs shaking, Samira leaned back against the door and closed her eyes. No, 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 no. The Nazis had abandoned Beirut, but not their prisoners. They had left two soldiers behind to finish what they had started the night before, and now her mother and the other prisoners were being marched out of town to be shot in the woods.